He was laying in bed, getting ready to doze off and saw the alert for Russell Wilson pop across his screen. No, this is the face of a man who's wrestling with some demons right now. Uh, Russell Wilson is Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. I couldn't sleep either. It's awesome. There is a God. And for him to post with Sticks <laughs> Renegade, like I'm just imagining that conversation. Hey, hey, Steelers, can you guys hold off on making the announcement so I can get this uh, this video posted yeah. so I can release it for my brand? By the way, Sticks, a Chicago band. It was phenomenal. So I find myself this morning. Oh, let's go. AFC North, 11 to 1. Steelers, 40 to 1 for the conference, Wait. 80 to 1 for the Weren't, Super Bowl. Weren't all Let's those go. numbers about the same before they signed Russ? Uh, that, <laughs> so the value's point. there. So the value's there. Point. You make this miraculous Nothing has changed at quarterback. Oh, miraculous. And then, <laughs> yes. Yes, and then there's value. Oh. This value will not be out there for long. I'm telling you. Okay. Now, we if we did an impromptu power rankings of the quarterbacks in the AFC North, you've got to put Russ number one ahead of Lamar <laughs> and Burrow <laughs> and Deshaun Watson. You've got the biggest game record on defense in TJ Watt. You're drunk. You know, Go back to Tom bed. Lynn, this is ridiculous. Tom Lynch finally getting his Coach of the Year award that we talk about every single year. How he gets no respect in that. Get out of here, Stefanski. They don't even know his name at the award show. Get out. Everybody else out of the AFC North. It is now owned by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Aaron, this is so awesome. So much content to come. I, I can't wait. In all sincerity, I don't know what this downside is that a, lo a lot of Steelers people, including you, talk about. Like, what is the big downside? It's a bad season. You're not stuck in the middle anymore. Well, oh, no, no. It, would, it would give They're you a still... reason to to move move forward. They They are still stuck in the middle, and they've also – inadvertently reset their franchise quarterback clock uh, that they thought they had started a couple years ago <laughs> with a 36-year-old Russell Wilson. Aaron, it's, give me some sort of hope, and uh, please don't dance but, on my grave any more than Joe already has. The hope is the case that you laid out before. Like, the, the Steelers don't have to pay them a lot of money, so, like, why not? At least they didn't go all in and overpay Russell Wilson right. at this point in his career. So I'm here for it all. I mean, oh, yeah. I, as crazy as it is, should they really be 11 to one in the division? I don't know. Um, if they get off to a hot start, I could see that number getting shorter, oh, but uh, it's, it's still an upgrade over what they had last year. I mean, well, you can't deny but, but that. That's, 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 I mean, that's damning with faint praise here. I mean, at, uh, an upgrade over Kenny Pickett is, well, congratulations. I mean, I, there are high school quarterbacks. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being just wow. a little hyperbolic there. Um, there are a lot of quarterbacks that would have been an upgrade over Kenny Pickett. And yeah, you're right. It's it's a cost-efficient maneuver. But if those are the best things you can say about it, it's better than Kenny Pickett and you don't really have to pay anything for it, uh, that's not the move of a team that's trying to really legitimately establish themselves as contenders. You know, honestly, um, it's hard not to reset it right now. They haven't won with Justin, and I'm a big Justin Fields fan. But the market, you just saw Mac Jones just get moved. The market isn't good to move quarterbacks right now. You're not get, probably getting a second-round pick for Justin Fields. Maybe it can get moved up depending on his performance. But it probably makes sense right now if they're really looking at it carefully. That I'm, I'm a Caleb Williams fan. I'm a Justin Fields fan. Um, but to take Caleb right now, to still have the number one, number nine pick, to have the flexibility to move one or both of those picks to acquire even more picks to build around Caleb probably makes sense right now. It's probably uh, you see all these quarterbacks uh, ha that have won deals on the rookie deals, whether you go back to Flacco or Russell Wilson, um, you've got basically five years to reset the bar right now. Uh, with a new offensive coordinator, new way of doing things in Chicago. So you probably pair them both up together right now, and that's probably the way to go. Well, I don't really know because, you know, it's, it's a completely different regime right now in Washington. It's a new way of doing business in New England. They have the most money. And so are they going to spend all the money? Are they going to be uh, – 
Are they going to be a, a little less spend thrifty uh, at this point as they try to maybe build through the draft? I'm, I'm, because we don't know how they're going to do business right now. But I would say that if Washington wants to kind of jump back into the NFC East race and they have not been a part of it for the last three years, if they want to jump back in the NFC East race, they have a chance to draft a quarterback at the top. Uh, Sam Howell can still be there to compete on a rookie contract, but they got a chance that they unloaded. There's two starting defensive ends during the season last year. I mean, I got to believe that if, if Washington and Joshua Harris is, is not cheap, I've seen what he's done in both the NHL and the NBA. I, I got to believe Washington's going to be big spenders. They've got the most money. They have the, as many needs as any other team in this whole business. They're going to get a quarterback at the top of the draft. Um, I got to believe that Washington's going to be big spenders this week. It's tough. Are, are we in a situation where we're picking on North Carolina or trying to figure out which team's going to beat them? Maybe the way where they're playing right now with uh, the two headed monster that they have led by Davis and Baycott, possibly. Um, so I look at teams that played them close or beat them and a, a team that's not playing their best ball right now, but I find kind of interesting that if, if you're looking for some value, it's Paul's Clemson squad. They did beat North Carolina. They split them in the regular season. They lost to Duke by one. They're top 10 in the nation in free throw percentage. So if you're looking for something, maybe at the end of the game, they'll be able to uh, hit clutch free throws. That's the team I ended up looking at, knowing there's not a ton of value. They're they're one of those squads that gets the uh, – the single buy as opposed to the double buy. But there are in the top four, there are some teams like that I'm just not interested, Aaron. Like Virginia and Pitt, the, they get that double buy. I would rather take a shot with a team like Clemson. You know, as, as far as the Big Ten, Purdue's even money. You're just looking, okay, which team can be Purdue? That's where we're at right now. Is Purdue going to win this uh, conference tournament in back-to-back years? Last year, uh, in the title game, they played against a double-digit seed. It was Penn State that made it all the way as a 10. So could, could you find someone on the other side that makes some sort of a run? If you look at the Purdue losses this year, Northwestern, Nebraska, Ohio State. And in that Northwestern spot, remember, their win against Northwestern was in overtime. So what what happened in these games? Well, no surprise if you watch college hoops. Northwestern Northwestern shot the lights out, fifty percent from threes uh, when they won. Nebraska shot the lights out, sixty one percent from threes when they took down the Boilermakers. So I mean that's really what you're going to have to do um, if you look at the Big Ten overall where they rank as far as volume. Nebraska has the most volume from beyond the arc. They average twenty six hmm. three point attempts per game. Illinois in that conversation as well. So Nebraska and Illinois are up there as far as accuracy. Number one, Northwestern. And it's a decent margin because it goes from 40 down to a bunch of teams at 36%. So man, I, I end up looking at, at the very top. I don't think it's a, it's a big surprise that those other teams not named Purdue, that it's Illinois, Nebraska, Northwestern, all these teams that pop in, in three, three point volume and three point percentage. Um, so that's where I'm keeping it guys. If you're going somewhere, that's not Purdue. I'm not looking very far down the board. It's a, it's, it's a conference that doesn't have much depth. So what do you think's at the bottom? Right. It's bad. 